right, I'm about to start the fourth panel for the Cross and Christmas Flowers from Sweet Pea. And I have hooped some no-show poly mesh in the Monster Snap Hoop for the Brother PR1055 Entrepreneur Pro. And if you have a single needle machine, you're going to do the exact same process, except you're just going to change your threads manually. Other than that, everything is going to be exactly the same. I sent the design over wirelessly using the Brother Design Database Transfer. And in the bobbin, I have a Filtech magnetic bobbin with a 70 weight white bobbin thread. And I have my thread on the back of the machine and I'm not getting all hung up on thread colors because I just use colors that match the fabric or the pattern that I am going to use. So there's no applique in this particular panel except for the pieces of the cross that are at the bottom of the design. So I am going to touch the wireless button to pull up the design. Here it is right here. It says it's too large, it's going to rotate it uh, 90 degrees. I'm going to touch the 90 button and it looks upside down. I could stitch it this way, but my brain wants it the other direction. So I'm just going to hit set and right after set, before we hit edit end, I'm going to just touch the rotate button and it will rotate it even though I touch 90. It'll do it 180 because it knows it has to be one way or the other. And I'm going to tell it okay. This little machine's pretty smart. I'm all finished with any kind of editing that I might do on this menu, so I'm going to touch Edit End. And right here we have the three spools, and this is where I need to assign the thread colors that go with each thread color change. So I'm going to touch my spools. This column right here corresponds to the thread color changes that are in the pattern. And these buttons right here correspond to the ten spools on the back of the machine. Here's a preview window and it'll tell you we're on number one of 18 color changes. The hand means stop. The thread with the line through it means do not stitch and then we have the OK button. So the first thing I need to do is just go through here and do this. This first stitch is a placement line for the batting. I'll do that in black so that you can hopefully see it. and. I say this all the time, you would think that this thing would stitch and then stop, but it doesn't. It stops and then stitches. So I need to go to stitch number two, and before it stitches number two, I need to tell it to stop so that it stops and then stitches, and I need it to stop so that I can pull the hoop out of the machine and cover the placement line. So I'm going to tell it to stop by touching the hand. So I've told it to stop by touching the hand and then I want it to stitch number five. And that way it's going to choose black because I have black on spool number five. There are the brown threads for the vine through there. That's going to be on spool number four. I need to change that to a brown. And then there are the holly berries and those are going to be on spool number ten. Okay, so I'm going to change spool number four right here to a brown, so make sure I've got my colors right, and then we will get stitching. To change my thread colors, what I do is I will take off a, a big, I don't know, about a foot or so of the color that's coming off. So I've got about a foot long tail, and then I'll put the color on that I'm going to use. And that foot gives me lots of room to go ahead and just tie these. I kind of twist them one time together and then tie them in a single knot like that and then I'll just let it drop. So that's spool number four that I'm changing. Now what I'll do here on the screen is across the bottom right here there's the lock button and here's a settings and a video and you've got a hoop with two needles with arrows going either direction. I'm going to touch that and then here this corresponds to the needles. I'm going to touch number four and now I'm going to take my two fingers and I'm just going to pull the thread out of number four and pull it toward me. 
and let it pull all the way through the machine till I, till I get the tails from the knot that I have. And then here across the bottom of the machine, I'm going to do the needle threader button. And that little hook came through the needle. And I'm going to push it underneath the little feet of the hook and around that flange and just pull that off. And then I'm going to hit the needle threader button one more time. And the machine is re-threaded with the new color. I've finished changing all my thread colors and I'm just going to touch OK. And OK, I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to hit the embroidery button and jump into embroidery. And it's all set. You know one thing I forgot to do? You're supposed to put a drop of oil in this every day. And I'm going to pull the bobbin out. I've got plenty of bobbin. And I want to show you how to do that. You would go back to the, on the menu on the bottom of the screen, the, the hoop with the two needles and the arrows, and touch that. And there is an icon there with a little oil indicator. And when you touch that, it's going to drop the hook, make it turn down so that it can be oiled. So I'm just going to put a little drop right there. This is a oil dispenser from Handy Quilter, and I like it. I've used it for years. It's supposed to go for your long arm, but it works just fine. And then touch OK again, and the hook will move back into position, and that's it. And then I'm just going to pop this in and close that up and put my hoop back on. OK. I'm going to tell it OK and lock and go. And it's going to do the placement line for the batting. I did get a little bit of oil residue right when it started. Not a big deal, I'm going to cover it, but kind of keep that in mind if you're ever working on something else. You may want to run a, uh, oh I'm going to put the fabric on top of that as well. You may want to run a piece of um, you know, something, have it be on something that you don't, that you're planning to cut away or something like that. I told it not to stop, so it's going to run it again. I could have skipped this stitch. Now it's going to do the background quilting. Placement line for the cross. I want it to stop, and it did, and the tack down for the left side of the cross. I didn't tell it to stop, and I should have. So it started, and I'm going to go ahead and hit lock and scissor cut. I forgot. You got to pay attention. So now I'm going to trim away. I'm going to leave this part up at the top and trim around all of the other three sides. Okay, so I've trimmed all around the three sides and left the tab at the top. Now I'll just hit lock and go. And it will do the placement line for the right side of the cross. Should stop. Okay. And I didn't tell it to stop, so I'm going to catch it. I'm going to trim this away. I'm going to trim it away on all three sides and leave the little tab at the top. Now it's going to do the final satin stitching on the cross, left side. It just is going to stitch this tack down right here. And I'm going to put my black fabric over that by a quarter of an inch so it can tack it down and then we're going to fold it over. You use the bottom edge of your stitch line underneath this as the placement line for this. I'm going to pull this over 
and iron it down flat. All right, and now it's going to tack that all down. And before it does that stitch, I'm going to take this off and I am going to trim this right here. But I'm going to leave this and this, so I'm just going to trim it straight right down there. Okay, so I trim this off down here and now I have this piece and it's going to stitch up this way. So I used this bottom stitch line right here as the placement line for the black fabric and I'm laying it over it by a quarter of an inch. Well now it's all messed up, I gotta go back and do it again. Okay, I'm gonna remove the hoop and fold this down and iron it flat. All right, the rest of this, after this tack down, it's just gonna, I'm not gonna do any trimming. After this tack down, it's going to finish doing all the rest of its decorative stitching. So I'll see you guys back here in a bit. Okay, we're all finished. Oh, this turned out really pretty. Boy, that red, it just makes it pop, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna take this out of the hoop and trim it up with the trimmer by George. Okay, I have my new Martelli rotary mat. Love this thing. And the trimmer by George, if you haven't seen it, it has, this is a piece of aluminum right here and it's a metal lip. See, it sticks up like that. And what that does is it allows you to fold up the fabric of your project right against that stitch line and set that lip on there and then you can fold it over like this and completely cut that off and protect the fabric. You have to use the 60 millimeter rotary cutter. You can't use the 45. It doesn't, uh, it's the 45, the wheel won't get over this edge right here unless you're using a Martelli rotary cutter. I'm told that that works. Okay. Pull this up. See, this is much better than trimming in the hoop. If you're gonna be doing these kind of projects, this is definitely the way to go. Okay. And then what you can do is it's got lines on it with measurements so I can fold it over and get my one half inch seam allowance. I forgot to cut the other one. So there's the batting. There's that seam. I'm just going to push it up against it and fold it down. <clears throat> and then flop it over and put that half inch seam line on that, put the half inch measurement on the half inch <clears throat> seam line. I'll put a link below to this. It's the most wonderful thing. I cut this, I forgot to trim this one on the half inch seam allowance. Kind of hard to see because it's all in black. Now this edge right here, you want to be sure to leave these little tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this, fold this up, trim it so I can get away the batting and the stabilizer. And then I'm going to fold this and make sure I leave half an inch. Okay, awesome. All right, we are ready now to go to the sewing machine and put all of these together. Oh, it is so pretty, my gosh. So sparkly, I love it. I have cut two three by five inch pieces. These are gonna be my hanging tabs and we're going to fold in a quarter of an inch on each of the long sides, okay, and iron and then fold these together like this and then stitch one quarter of an inch down each long side 
and that will be our hanging tab. Okay, we are getting ready to sew together the hanging tabs, and so I have folded in a quarter of an inch on each long side, and I'm going to just fold them over on each other and run a quarter inch seam down both sides. So I just line these up. I did I just eyeballed it, you guys. I didn't do anything special. So these are done and ready to go. Putting these together is all in the pinning. The way I like to put these kinds of projects together is to start pinning the what what I there I call them points of interest. These this stitch line right here has to match this stitch line right here. Otherwise, it'll look all off, all right? And the way I do it is I will anchor these pieces together with loads of pins. So I usually will start pinning in the middle, and then I'll pin this point out here with this point, same with the other side, and then I will pin the outer edges, okay? So I like to use strong, straight pins. These are quilting pins. This is the Brother PQ 1500 SL. I've had this machine for years. I love it. And where you want to pin, and I want to make sure you can see what I can see what you see. So I'm going to take this pin and I'm going to put it right next to that dark, just on the inside of this stitch line, not outside, but just on the inside of that batting placement line. I'll put that there and then I'm going to go right on this point right here. Okay? And I'm going to make sure that those are pinned together exactly end to end. Okay. Now I've got that one on. Alright? And I've got the pin horizontal. I'm going to take another pin right next to it. I'm going to go in in the seam allowance and back out. So it is anchored. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. Put it right in that corner. It's kind of hard. There's a lot of there's a lot of thread right there. I'll put it right in that corner and I'm going to put it right in this corner right here anchoring those two stitch lines together. They're not going anywhere, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing here and push this through. Okay, now these can come out because they're anchored with flat pins. I'm only going to do the outside of this stitch right here. I'm just going to go right on the outside of it, on the inside, inside of the, the outer horizontal stitching line right there, just inside that. And I'm going to go in the exact same spot here. Get that pin horizontal. You don't want it like this or like this. You want it horizontal. I like to hold it between my fingers just like that. I'm going to take this pin and anchor it and outside corner. You can do outside or inside, but you want to make sure they're the same. Get that pin horizontal and anchor it on either side for a total of six pins holding all these stitch lines together. Okay. And then this one, very outside corner, I'm going to take my pin, got a little black thread there, don't know where that came from, and I'm going to put it just so that it, it is in the corner of the stitching on this side and I'm going to put it directly inside the corner of the stitching on this one. Now if your seam allowances are odd or off or whatever, don't worry about that. It is more important that your pin is between the two pieces in the exact same spot, top and bottom, and you have anchored it. That's more, most important. I'm going to do this one. I'll pull that out. Now I'm going to sew it. 
and I am going to sew it just to the just inside this line right here. You've got two lines of stitching right here and I'm going to sew right in between those two lines. And pull your pins before you get there. If you have trouble with your needle going through it, try switching to an 8012 or a 9014. Going right over that first line of stitching there. My point of reference on this is this line of stitching that is right here that I'm trying to stay in between the two, I have got that right here on this piece of the toe. I can just where the hole is in the toe, that's where that line of stitching is going. That's how I know it's straight. I don't know about that pin being straight anymore. Let's see how we did. Look at that. It's perfect. These need to be pressed open. A seam roller would be handy here. A uh, clapper if you've got one. Since I'm using glitter fabric, I'm going to use a press cloth as well. But, man, that turned out pretty, didn't it? Oh my goodness. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I'm gonna attach the third and fourth and then I will attach here in the middle. Okay. Oh man, it's off. Look at that. That is disappointing. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. It's off by like a needle width. It's off. Okay, now here's where I have to say, how much is that going to bother me? Oh, that's going to bother me a lot. That's going to bother me a whole lot. So, shameless plug, uh, it is seam ripper season, you guys, for gifts for your quilty friends, guild members, guild presidents, uh, that type of thing. We have these on powertoolswiththreadstore.com. They are uh, stainless steel. My husband makes these in the shop outside. I'll put a link up above and show you if you want to watch that video. It's pretty cool. And we have lots of different colors and they go through thread like a hot knife through butter and I absolutely love them. We have necklaces uh, which are great for long armors. Okay. I would not be without these. This is the best seam ripper. I'm just putting it in I aim the little red ball down toward the bottom and just push. And if I didn't have stitching in the way that I'm going through, it would go super, super smooth. But I don't want to cut those stitches on the, um, the sides of the cross, so I'm being pretty careful. Aha, there we go. Can you stand it? Isn't that nice? These are the best seam rippers ever. He figured out we've sold about 1,200 of them in the last year and a half. <laughs> They're incredibly popular. So, powertoolswiththreadstore.com. Great gifts. And we also have extra ripper ends if you have uh, a broken tip. If you've got one and the tip broke. We've got more ripper ends out on the store site as well. All right. Let's, uh, let's do this over. I still got it off. That is so strange. Okay, since the sides are fine, I'm going to leave them. Okay. 
Why are they still off? Arr, you will not beat me! Ah! Oh my goodness! Fold that in. Get it exactly where I want it. And now I'm going to iron the fire out of it. And steam it. Okay. Now I'm going to go sew it. Ta-da! I just had to give it a little bit of encouragement and tell it where it was going to go. It was confused. Nailed it. Okay, now I'm going to do these out here. Perseverance, you guys. That looks great. Okay, I've got to smash these down on the back and get the seams pressed flat and open. So I'm going to put my tabs on right now. We come in an inch and a half from the edge, which will put this right here. Oh wow, so pretty. Okay, it is ready to get the backing put onto it. So I'm gonna... Okay, we are in the home stretch. I have my backing fabric face up and this is ready to go on it. I'm just going to flip it over and this is just a scrap. I'm gonna put it up in the corner here and match it at the top. I'm not even going to cut it right now. I'm just going to leave it exactly as it is. All of these other ones I'm going to do horizontally. That's just an easy way to pin these. It doesn't matter. You can do it anyway. And I'm going to use stitch witchery to close it up. That's a permanent bond. It's very easy to use. I'm just putting one pin per panel on each side of it. I'll leave it open between the top tabs because nobody's going to look up there, right? So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine now and just inside that outer stitch line I'm going to stitch all the way around starting here at this on the inside of this top tab. I'm going to back stitch, go all the way around, come back, get just to the inside of this tab, back stitch, and leave the opening. Alrighty, I've trimmed the excess fabric away. I'm gonna trim off these points here. This will give less bulk in those curves. One of the things you can do when you're sewing points like this that are on the to the out, like a point, like a collar on a shirt even, I will stop, instead of coming up here to the turn and then turning the fabric and going straight. I will stop two stitches before the turn, turn the fabric 45 degrees and take two stitches and then make the turn and go straight. That actually, those two little stitches will come out like a sharp point on the outside, but it will give your fabric somewhere to go inside. That's what I did here at this point too. This is actually two stitches straight across on this point, but it will look like a point when it's all turned. Okay, we are ready to turn this thing. Boy, that's pretty. Just lovely. Sometimes if you lick your fingers, that actually helps. Wash your hands. Safety first and all that, right? But the little moisture on your fingers gives that fabric an idea of where to go and it wants to do what you want it to do. Okay. 
Alrighty, so in order to use the stitch witchery, the first thing I'm going to do is press in the opening so that it knows what it's supposed to be doing. I've got a line here, a stitch line that I don't want to show. Okay, this stitch witchery is a Dritz product. Well, it comes in a Dritz package. And I just have the little half inch size. And I'm going to put it so that the backing fabric is closest to the top so that the steam can get through it. Make sure nothing's poking out so it doesn't stick to your iron. And just steam it. Hold it for about 10 seconds. Okay, you guys, this was a lot of fun. You guys have a Merry Christmas. I'll go sew something. Bye.